Yo, yo, what up, boy? Dirty bird, what, what it do? Welcome back to the business, baby. Man, it is good to be back, man. It is good to be back. Yeah, dude, we missed you last week. Unfortunately, while you were gone, it's like something, it must have been like meant to be for you not to be here because we had a fuck up last week. Whole bunch of shit went down. We get on the stream, we get on the podcast to record. Twice my computer crashes, so that was already a bad sign. And then at the end of it, when I bring it up to like look at the recording, it fucking didn't pick up any audio and it was bugged. So needless to say, I got pissed off, bought a new PC. We're in the game now, baby. We're in the fucking game. So yeah, we're, we're good. Great. A little upgrade. We're back in it. We uh, did a little mixing and fixing. So the stream should be crispy now. We should be good. So all the podcasts should sound really good. The video should be really good. So we should be in a good place. Absolutely, man. What a week for me to come back, dude. I know, right, man? It's like, it's almost like we didn't even need to talk about it beforehand. It's going to be more important to talk about it now that it's happened because UFC 290 was incredible. That might have been one of the best cards I've seen, dude. I, I definitely could say it's top five. Top five all time. Dude, so much crazy knockouts, man. I mean, they had, it was what, four and under, under like 30 seconds or there was, let's see, one, we had one, two, three, I think it was four. Yeah, four, four knockouts in under 31 seconds. Four finishes under 31 seconds. That is insane. I saw a picture of you watching it on the stream with your shirt on. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> at about, at about Robert Whitaker, Dragus Duplessis, I was sauce, bro. <laughs> bro, I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. Because I was so amped up, bro. And nobody was in here at, at the very beginning, like the very the early prelims. So it was me and Miller Light. And that was it. So <laughs> by the end of the early prelims, because it went, you know, unanimous decision to start it off, which it was a decent fight. And then it went knockout, knockout, sub. And I'm over here just like, you know, I'm hyped up watching this shit, just drinking, drinking. Next thing you know, it's only seven o'clock because everything happened so fast and i'm like damn these damn prelims haven't even started and i look over and i've already drank like five beers <laughs> I'm like, oh this is gonna be a great night and then all of a sudden we get to the prelims um and then it just kept going dude so i'm ready to get into it nasty first of all let me go ahead and make it this is over the octagon podcast episode 26 nasty's back i'm back we in this thing we're going to discuss ufc 290 today in high depth I know next week, this coming weekend, we have a not the greatest of cards. So it's going to be very hard to sit here and talk about that for hours. So we might do a break, 10 minute breakdown tonight, and that might be about it for that. And then maybe next week, if it becomes like as intense as this shit, we might end up talking about it more in depth, the outcome of every fight. But I'm ready to get into 290, man. I want to discuss a few things. Early prelims. Holy shit, dude. Started out three finishes right off the rip to start the card, man. It's insane, man. This dude, Jesus, he is, dude, that was just one, one and done. The he most sealed. perfectly yeah. executed right hand. I'm talking, and he walked over him. I think he was trying to check him. He was like, am I getting punked? He right was, now? and the ref shoved him out of the way, like, get out of the way. <laughs> dude, I, I think you would have seen, is this real? Is this dude playing possum? Because, I mean, that's happened before, but. And, you I know, mean, he, he going into it, I don't believe he was the favorite. I think he was the underdog going into that fight. I looked up the fight afterwards, man. There's actually an MLB player with the same exact name. Jesus Aguilar? Yeah. And actually, I think that was his first knockout, too, if yeah, I'm not mistaken. Man. First knockout of his career, and he was the underdog going into the fight. So, holy shit, yeah, that kind of electrified everything. It's kind of crazy to know if 17 seconds into a fight, a punch takes you out. Like, I get Ben Askren getting kneed in the face. Like, that's some serious shit, but... A right overhand right, cold. Dog. Imagine that's a, that dude's got to hit like a, like a brick. Disgusting, dude. Right on the fucking fin, dude. It's just they the most perfectly it. executed punch. He threw it like I remember we, we, way back in the day, Dan <laughs> Henderson. The way he would launch that fucking overhand right, dude. It would just if it hit, it's fucking over with. Yeah, and that's exactly what it seemed like to me, man. Just a straight up, straight up Dan Hendo, go to fucking sleep. Yeah, I was very impressed by that. I mean, obviously, you know, things sometimes things happen. People get lucky, things like that. Punches happen. We obviously know that 
a one punch knockout could happen at literally any given moment. Um, so, but yeah, that, that knockout started the night. Like that was the <laughs> first knockout of the night. And then we go right into the next fight, S- Simon versus Mitchell and Simon again, delivered first round knockout. Another dude, one. Dude, straight out of South Africa, South Africa ended up having a, uh, a, a dominant night. performance. I was like, okay, South Africa's out here. Fucking, I was on the way home from, uh, from Greece and I was talking to somebody that's from South Africa and I was like, Duplessis, Duplessis, like, no, Duplessis. Duplessis. Like, you know I was like, yeah, I know him. I was like, he did something really cool last night. I guess South Africa's got a good little program, man. Well, it's clear, it's clear they do, especially after 290. I mean, oh, shit. Yeah, two, two guys stepping up there, so that's pretty good for him. He looked good too, man. He looked good. Yeah, no, he really did. I mean, 9 0 in the UFC now. Let's let's see what he's got next. He's definitely out of the early prelims. I can promise you that after that performance. Easily, dude. He's definitely going to be a prelim contender guy. Like, he's going to be fun to watch in division that's, you know, new blood. Let's go. Let's fucking go. Yep. And then to end it, we had an, another finish. Petrino uh, gets the arm triangle o- over Fresh Neo. And again, another guy who is fighting a guy like Fresh Neo, who's, a, who's not a bad fighter, who I thought would have put up a better fight. Round three triangle. Um, now he's 9-0. and So we had two undefeated guys come out on top. Have you been seeing a lot of people do these arm triangles more and more lately? Yeah. Speaking of an arm triangle, there was one last night on the Ultimate Fighter. Was there? I didn't get a yeah, watch it. Yeah. Perfectly executed arm triangle. Oh my god. It's beautiful man. too. There's yeah. So the, much more setups for it now, man. People are just getting so creative with their arm triangles. Like even on a fight later on that we're going to talk about, which might be the best fight in the card. People yeah. Throwing arm triangles all day. Yes. And then that that was just the early prelims, dude. <laughs> yeah. that was like, yeah. that was i mean and then the prelims things get start to get a little bit more crazier as well so we started out the early prelims with a first round finish we called this one bef- i mean if you if we actually got to put the podcast out we actually called this one i went with alonzo manifeld uh, as the underdog against jimmy crew i especially after watching their last fight, Manifeld seemed to have more power than Krut did. Krut just tried to do, you know, utilize his wrestling, but time, time, time is a wise tell, my friend. It catches up to you fast. And as we saw, it did. Manifeld looked great. He put on a dominant performance, way better than his previous performance against him. And Jimmy Krut, you know, did not look that good. He didn't look too good, man. And Manifeld, you called it, man. Manifeld is extremely strong. He is very strong. And, um, I mean, that dude is just fucking big, and he dominated, dude. And I, I wanted a knockout, but, I mean, he got the sub in there. But, I mean, he's 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 gonna Which be- is surprising that he got the sub over a guy like Crew. That's how you know that Crew was kind of finished. Once he landed those strikes and got him to where he needed to get him and then was able to get that choke secure. And then you just see, I know at the end of it, you saw Crew kind of put his gloves on the, the octagon. Everybody's like, oh man, did he retire? It did come out. He did not retire. He's just taking a break, but I don't yeah. think we'll see him return, to be honest. No, man. And that was actually their second time fighting. Was yeah, their, uh... they, they had a draw. It was a draw the first time. That's what I'm saying. It, the first fight was way, be- like, was more, like, it was obviously closer than this fight, but I, I just knew based on the previous fight that Manafeld had the better strength and power and Kurt's a little bit you know his game has gone downhill since Super. the old jimmy crew yeah jimmy crew used to be something man but the thing is you, you got to be a hybrid in this game and uh jimmy crew you're not too good you're good at some things but man you you got to step it up if you're new something it's not your time anymore 100 percent. so manifeld appreciate you winning me some dough my boy it's so crazy that we're getting that it's back to back to back finishes dude so now we're going to the next crazy finish of the night denise gomes versus yar yargway yeah what that's the yasmin right yeah and yasmin going in as a favorite of like minus 280 290 she was like a pretty heavy favorite in this fight and and, and gomes 20 second finish dude what and put the perfect perfectly executed strikes Boom, got it out of there and finished quick. You saw her walk away like this. What? 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 See, I didn't I took Yasmin. I still think Yasmin is good. And I was really shocked that she was able to finish it that quickly. I believe we were talking about Yasmin like what two months ago. 
we were, man. And we and we were saying how good she looked inside the inside the octagon. <laughs> He's good, man. But the thing is, like you said, anybody can get caught. And she got caught. Now she okay, so she fought in December December third. Have we been doing it this long? No, we haven't. So maybe it wasn't her. But I do recall her last few wins uh being pretty solid. Yeah. She's good, man. I've been fo- I've been following her for a while now, dude. She's a beast, dude. But clearly, it was not enough. Gomes got it finished, and that was the second fastest knockout of the night at twenty seconds. We're just we got blessed on this car, dude. Blessed. So, and then we kind of took a break after that, and we had Tyera and Chavez, which to me, I thought that Tyera could have looked a lot better than what the odds predicted him to be. 14 and 0. I thought he was going to run straight through this guy. Yeah, he did kind of points wise, but I thought it was going to be a lot more dominant performance out of him. No, man. And there was a lot of speed because, you know, this is a flyweight division, dude. You know, we can talk about it later on, but, you know, there's, it's, it's not deep. No. You got an undefeated fighter coming in there to make a name for himself. You want him to at least fucking do something, man. And I, I I was not impressed by that at all. I think he was the second heavy, he, uh, second biggest favorite on the card too, if I'm not mistaken. Really? Yeah, it's like he 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 had a pretty. Yeah, so he was coming in on like a sub sub decision win, oh, like he was up there in in the in the in the odds. I'm pretty sure he was the second highest favorite on the card, if I'm not mistaken though. But but uh. Damn. Yeah, I was expecting a bigger performance. Yeah, he 29-27 him. I mean, he did outstrike him. He did outclass him, but I thought he was going to finish him. Like, you got you got 10 minutes of, of control time, and you couldn't finish the fight? Yeah, I know, right? Come on, man. You got to do better than that, bro. If I got 10 minutes of your ass, I'm finna get your ass gone, baby. You must believe it. Facts, facts. I feel that. But regardless of that, fuck that fight, because the real the real fight is next, my friend. Man. Hang hang a hat up to the legend himself, Robbie Lawler. One of the most epic walkout, like one of the most epic goodbyes in the history ever. I mean, you cannot make up a better story than what he just did. We've been saying this since episode one. We have. We wanted somebody to hang it up the right way, dude. And you know it what? made me feel so good to see it, dog. Thank God, man, because, dude, his story, I could I could talk an hour about him, dude. His story is incredible, dude. He's fought everywhere. There's Robbie Lawler with hair, then Robbie Lawler with no hair. Yep. The dude has fought everywhere. He started in the UFC early. You no, know, we talked about this. You, you said it early. We talked about this. There are people who are in the Overs Club who weren't even alive when Robbie Lawler started fighting in the UFC. No way. Yeah. I get it, man. He started... 23... 21 years ago. Holy shit, dude. And, dude, he was successful in it, man. I know he left after getting, like, um, knocked out by Nick Diaz. Yeah. <laughs> his first fight in the UFC was in 2002, Nick. We looked it up. We were we were trying to see when his first fight was, and it was in 2002. Let me double-check just to be 100%. But I'm almost, you know I'm almost 100%. His first fight was 2002. It is. Holy shit. And he's been fighting, he's been fighting, uh, yeah, he's been fighting for this since 2002. Dude, I mean, the, the guy, the, the guy about him, man, he has, he's fought everywhere, dude. He, he, I lied. He started UFC. fighting in 2001, but his first fight in 2000 in the UFC was in 2002 against Aaron Riley. That's fucking UFC you know, 37, dude. 37. We're at UFC 290. Oh my God. <laughs> That's fucking nuts, dude. But yes, back to the back to that, man. Like, come on, man. What a legend, dude. Dude, he started off the UFC, had a, had a very successful career, and then he just does, he pulls the card that everyone else wants to do. He's like, dude, I want to fight, you know, out of the country. I want to do all this stuff, dude. He loses Nick Diaz. He fucking joins Icon. He gets his championship belt. He loses, loses to Mayhem Miller, Jason Miller. I know. I remember that guy. Then he he even Pride. fought in Strike Force and stuff. Dude, yeah, he goes to Pride, gets a flying knockout win. I watched that fight yesterday. I was like, I completely forgot about this dude. Gets a flying knockout win. He's fought everybody, dude. And he, dude, he became the elite XC middleweight champion. 
He does really good in uh, Strike Force. He, he loses to Jake Shields, but I mean, that's Jake Shields. That dude was a fucking, fucking problem. You back see, then. remember when he fought Frank Trigg? Yeah, dude, Frank Trigg, dude. <laughs> The battle of the balls right there, man. Like, holy shit. There's so many. He has fought so many legends, bro. Like, let's just highlight some of his, like, biggest wins. Josh Koscheck coming back oh, into the UFC out of strike force. He gets Josh Koscheck. Knocked him out. Knocked dude. him out. Yeah. Rory McDonald, split decision win. Big win. Rory was great, dude. <clears throat> Matt Brown, another one. And then he gets the belt against Johnny Hendricks. And then he goes on a three fight or he defends it three times before he loses to Tyron Woodley. Oh yeah, man. He, he was good. The whole Carlos Condit fight was pretty fucking awesome too, man. A lot of people say it was split, whatever like that. Condit's one of my favorite fighters, but that shit alone was impressive. She's chilling, bro. Um, no, for sure. And then he loses that. And then he comes back, wins against Donald Cerrone. Then he kind of goes on a rough streak. Definitely does, dude. I mean, that's that's just that's age. That's when but fighting. that's when it started to catch up to him. So I could see, you know. But then he comes back, gets a big win over Nick Diaz on his on that that final. Like, hey, pick me back up again. And then now we're we're, we're almost today a huge win over a veteran too, Nico Price, thirty eight second knockout in your retirement fight. That's we've been manifesting this since day yeah. one. We've and all these other fighters have gone out. Like you know, gone out. Just they lose their big their big fight, and this guy goes out there and wears his heart on his sleeve and wins it. And then they had the perfect, perfect like video set up for him and all that stuff. Like it almost wanted to make it almost wanted to make you cry. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I did a little bit, and so did he. Thing is, watching him cry, I thought Joe Rogan was going to tear up too. It was fucking. Uh, I guarantee you, Joe Rogan, when he talks about it on his podcast, he's going to cry. Hundred percent. So, He's been caught in for how long? Yeah, I mean, dude, you got to think. Joe Rogan's been doing UFC since the 2000s, early 2000s. And he's probably seen Robbie's whole career. He definitely has. He, actually, probably yeah. had, definitely has seen his whole career. So, um, But yeah, man, shout out to Robbie Lawler. Enjoy that. Hopefully money doesn't try to bring you back to get your chin knocked in. Because I don't want to see that. Yeah. I want you to hang it up and finish on top like you did, brother. Yeah, and I, I don't want him. I know Conor McGregor saying, oh, he's going to come back just because. Well, Conor's a. Kind of pissing me off. I think he's full on alcoholic now, dude. Straight up. I think he is too, man. I think he's gone a little fucking nuts. He definitely. I mean, dude, he's sponsored by. He owns his own whiskey label, dude. You know how much he's drinking for free? Yeah, true, true. And every time you see him, he's like, shot, get the shot, mate. Come on, fuck. <laughs> come on, bro. <laughs> But I don't want to talk about the Ultimate Fighter because Conor McGregor's team is garbage, dude. They're getting their shit kicked in. I think not one yet. Zero and six. They're about to. They're about to. They got one more fight left, and if he loses, if they lose that fight, it'll be the first time in Ultimate Fighter history that one team has got fully swept. No fucking way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyways, back on topic. Do what? Yeah, I get it. What'd you say? Did he have what? Did he have his moment yet? Because I have not caught up to it. Uh, I mean, he's he's gotten to the octagon and like pushed Michael Chandler and they got into an argument, but it's not shit. He's starting to get really upset because he went he went into the octagon after his dude just lost and he goes up to Dana White. And he goes, now what happens if we get swept? And Dana was like, Connor, I don't know. <laughs> he was like, I honestly don't know. It's never happened. Like, but I saw like uh I saw the the highlights for the next one. I guess some of the the fighters are like um, calling out Connor like from a distance, and they're like, "You're a punk bitch! Like, come over here, I'll fight you!" Like, some of the prospects are trying to fight Connor McGregor now. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, they said one of the craziest things on Ultimate Fighter history is supposed to happen. So maybe a prospect's gonna jump on his ass. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah I'm now. I'm really interested in this. I think he's never Dana White's never seen in the whole entire series. That's gonna be fucking. Well, then it's probably they get swept. I mean, that's yeah, the most they, logical yeah. thing to think about now that I think about. It. I'm uh, hoping it's fucking shitty. No, I <laughs> hope that I really would love to see 
him lose then they get really pissed off and then shit just goes off the rails and then next thing you know we have like a wwe royal rumble ultimate fighter style bro let's go let's hit that but i know that all right fuck that we'll, we'll get onto that later i want to keep going because now we're at the the real deal the main card we got a little sidetracked folks sorry um my boy bo nickel starting out the night with a massive w where them hands come from brother that man's been in the gym where did they come from that bro? man's been training boy he said i i need to learn how to fight i need to learn how to strike i get it it was against an unranked guy who is debut fight i get it but his strikes looked pretty solid the five he threw dude extremely solid these those uppercuts yeah i mean gotta, you- and then val woodburn is a big motherfucker yeah so he yeah. must have caught him really qu- like and he looked quick too like got in boom got out boom got back in boom 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 finish Dude, he looked comfortable he He's did striking. because he wasn't yeah. afraid to get up in there because val could have knocked him out dude if if he would have caught him with that first original uppercut or right hand it might have took bo nichols head off bo wasn't intimidated bo got in there and got it done like, I don't know how you can even talk more about it. It's almost like you can almost ask, like, what's next for him? Like, what do you do now? I mean, dude, first off, I, I give homeboy a lot of credit for jumping in there. Oh, hell yeah. You, you know? got to. You got to jump. You got to give him credit. Give him where it's due. That's, that's super impressive. You're going against a freak of nature athlete. So a lot of these people that are saying this about, oh, how, how, how is he ever going to be so good at another thing besides wrestling and all this stuff like that? It's like. Well, you got a freak athlete like Steph Curry who can golf very well. If yeah. you're extremely good at something, dude, you put that mind focus into something else, you're going to dominate, dude. And he looked like he can fucking bang, bang, bang. Yeah, I think the biggest question is now is we have to see his chin get tested. We have to see someone really hit him hard enough to where it shakes him up a little bit and see how he reacts. Because if he looks like this every fight, he's going to be a world champion one day without a doubt. But the question is, is we haven't seen him get truly tested against a top ranked contender, top 15, top 10. I think we'll, we're will we going to get there shortly. I don't think it'll be very long before we see him competing at a high level. I know Dana uh, talked about um, him uh, taking it slow with him and, you know, continue building him throughout the ranks. He doesn't want to force him straight into a major fight yet. He wants to keep letting him build. So he's marinating him to be a world champion. It's It's inevitable. Yeah. Uh, I know me and me and a few guys were talking today on on Instagram chat about Bo in particular. And and I said, after watching him, like the only thing there's only like a few people that are going to be able to to stop him taking him down. I think he beats anybody in the top all the way up into the top five. I don't think he beats top five quite yet, but I I just don't see anybody outside of the top five that's going to be able to stop him getting stop that takedown. Uh, the only people is like maybe Hamzat, maybe Kamara Usman, and Gilbert Burns maybe can probably sh- you know not get taken down, but still could probably get taken down. But he just knows how to utilize his jujitsu and shit like that to get into good position. But Bo's jujitsu is getting better as time goes on. So maybe as the time when he gets to that point where he is fighting top ten, he might be a fucking black belt. He, dude, he might be, and that you know, that's that's a big discussion about the Hamza thing about who would uh, who would out wrestle who. And that's difficult because I listened to a lot of MMA podcasts, and one podcast in particular said they thought that they said Bo could right now could beat Hamza. I, I personally disagree. I think he still has a little bit of learning to do uh, because Hamza is is all around a, insane, bro. He's all yeah. all around insane. You know, Bo is still. Hasn't he hasn't fought that level of competition yet? And you can definitely you know how it goes in, in UFC when you just are out of your league and there's definitely levels to it, regardless of how good you are. There's always level to it. I mean, Arnold Allen, Max Holloway, we saw it there too. You know, Arnold Allen's a great fighter. Max Holloway's a veteran is and pieced him up. So Bo is yeah. Bo is there. Give him give him to about seven and zero, oh, eight and zero. Oh. Then you give him a top twelve fight and let's see how he does 
because like I said, it's going to take a guy like Kamara Usman to stop his wrestling or, or someone who is a great defensive defensive wrestler to really beat him. You know, do you think he could be Hamza in just a wrestling match? No. Uh, yeah, 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 I do. Yeah. Yeah. In just a wrestling match. Yes. No striking, no MMA, no grapple or no jujitsu. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Dude. Bone nickel. There's, I don't think there's a single person in the, the UFC that could beat him in a wrestling match. Okay. Straight, straight up wrestling match. That's what's up. I don't think so. He's, he's just too good of a wrestler. I like, that's like saying in, that's like, could he beat uh, an original Gracie in jujitsu? <laughs> it's like, no, <laughs> no, he could beat him in a wrestling match, but he's going to get fucking put in an arm triangle. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. And that's just, um, yeah, I mean, I, I would love Bo Nick. I want to see him good, but the thing is, you know, wrestling on a mat is a lot different than wrestling in a cage. Oh, yeah, because you, you got a little bit more space. There's no cage to stop you. Things like that. Yeah. There's a lot of differences. But I'm stoked for him. I'm happy to do that knockout, regardless of what I'm saying. That knockout was fucking like, clean. That put you can throw hands now. That's funny you asked you ask that question, because I remember hearing another interview with Bo Nickel um, about um, – Dang, I just forgot his name, dude. Why can't I just? Why did I forget his name? That's one of the best, Jordan Burroughs. Uh, I, that's one. That's one I read actually. Yeah. So he, they asked Bo Nickel, um, who would win in a wrestling match? Could Islam beat Joe Jordan Burroughs in a wrestling match? And Bo Nickel said, like, not even, like, not even close. It's not even close, man. It was like, dude, Jordan Burroughs, a seven-time national championship Olympic wrestler. He he's gonna make light work of Islam. Makachev. <laughs> so, oh, and that's another guy too, Islam. Like, could an Islam stop Bo Nickel takedown? You know what I'm saying? So, like, things like that. Th- those type of guys is going to be where the competition gets really interesting for Bo, especially with his wrestling. But no, there's not a single person in, in the UFC, I don't think, that could beat him in a wrestling match. God, well, I, I'm, I'm just ready for, I mean, it, I know it's not right of me, but I'm ready to see him fight something fucking good. I think everyone wants to see him crack out of like a top tenner. Oh, hundred percent, and it's gonna happen. He's definitely gonna get a big fight next, a a true test. But it might not be like a top fifteen. It it might be like right on the edge. What do you think they would give him? Um, no, dude. And where would you rank him at? Would you rank him at like yeah, six? No, nah, I'd rank him in the top twenty, maybe twenty. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he's five and zero oh in the five fights he's got in. What two of them are in an actual like pay per view? Yeah. So I mean, and one was against Val Woodburn, uh, of you know somebody who's making a debut, and the other one was against uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, Jamie Pickett, which yeah, you know he made light work of that, and then the two Dana White contender series fights. So I think he still needs about two more fights before he gets a top fifteen, even top twenty fight. I would put him just personally. I'd put him in the top almost top 20 for sure. But I think he does do pretty well in that division. As long as he keeps it up and kind of like slowly progresses that striking, he's going to be a problem, dude. Dude, do you see him? And I was just you know, looking through the rankings. I do it like every fucking day. I'm obsessed with the sport with fucking, um, what if they set him up with Sean Strickland? <laughs> I thought about that too, but that this, that's too early, too early, way but too dude, early. Dude. But Sean Strickland, the thing about Sean Strickland is Sean Strickland can scrap, dude. Dude, he, he can scrap, man. Like yeah. I, li- I listened, like I was listening to Joe Rogan and him on their podcast the other day. And if you haven't listened to that, by the way, holy fuck, dude, you have got to listen to that shit. Not Sean, really. Sean Strickland and Joe Rogan, They're, the Joe Rogan experience with Sean Strickland. Oh my god, Sean Strickland is a nutcase. And, and he's completely sober, right? He don't drink. I don't think so. I don't think so. He does not drink. I know I've I've seen in an interview. He's like, I don't even drink. I'm but like, when he talks about his upbringing and shit, oh dude, he's a wild man. Oh shit! Okay, you right. gotta listen to it. It's worth it for sure. But no, Sean Strickland and he, the way he talks about how he like trains and stuff. He, he dude, he he like full full on spars every single. Like, that's how he trains. Full yeah. full spar, hundred percent. Yeah, man, I, I, I it's a uh, nut, dude. He just wants to, he just wants to brawl, bro. Yeah, I see him uh, bringing in random people on the street. And there's a video that 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 went around where uh, he's scrapping a random person that said he could go in with him, 
and uh so yeah he yeah. is middleweight so it wouldn't even make sense as like but it would have to be more like hamza unless yeah because hamza and burns they're welterweight i wouldn't even thinking about that so yeah it might it, it might take a bigger like a bigger dude to shove a takedown it may be like uh sean strickland is not the number nine ranked number nine ranked middleweight that's weird um Seven. should be higher than that uh, Duplessis kind of messed all the things up, right? Well, Duplessis, Duplessis is number one now. I mean, he's got to be. He's number one contender. Mean, Should be. Shit, but uh, anyways, back to Bo Nickel. Holy shit. My boy is there. He's the real deal. I already been, I've already been saying it since the beginning, before we even started doing this podcast. Before, his very first Dana White Contender Series fight. Maddie even said it in, in, when we were watching the fights the other night. He's like, there's no... They're like... Dirty Bird's been following this guy from the beginning, if not longer. Well, since his wrestling career, really. But he's the real deal, dude. He's gonna he's gonna live up to the hype. I truly believe he will. Oh, uh, definitely, man. We're we're here for it, and uh, we've been saying this to the jump. So, well, the next fight was very disappointing to me, man. Because as all you know, we're Jalen Turner podcast. I love Jalen Turner. I've always liked Jalen Turner, and to see him lose, it really that crushed my soul, dude. I was. I needed. To, I had to drink like two beers for that one, dude. That one crushed me. I did. I did, I did drink a lot for that one, dude, because I was I was getting frustrated the whole entire time, man. He got at the bottom line, dude. The decision. I agree with it. I'm so fifty fifty on it, dude. I really thought he won because Dan Hooker only controlled thirty minutes of that second round, or thirty seconds of that second round. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just, the, the, I mean, he got outstruck, dude. You know, he got outstruck. Dude. I know. Turner got the takedown, I know, but it just I mean Jalen Turner looked it, gas going into that third act. He looked hurt. He looked gas. I don't know what happened. The thing is, but Dan Hooker was the one hurt, right? Well, no, because so going that head kick, dude. Dan Hooker's head has to be like the strongest thing known to man. You know, he he had he broke his arm, like he has a fractured arm, he has a fractured orbital orbital bone from the head kick. That's insane. And, and that's, he still won the fight. Yeah, that's, that's going to be a long healing process, too, I think, man. That's going to be a uh, fucking nuts. But he did piece Turner up, man. He he stayed in there strong. And at that at, at the end of that second round, he hurt him pretty bad. And that he never recovered from it. Yeah, and I'm not saying I hate Dan Hooker. I don't I don't at all. I don't hate him. But we've been we've been riding the Jalen Turner train for a while. We want him on the pad. We, st- we still want to go on the pod. Yeah, dude. <laughs> so upset yeah. i was so upset man. but it's like whatever dude i lost some money to that fight because i i had a, a a friendly wager with a buddy i took jalen turner obviously but i mean shit shout out to dan hooker he's a veteran in the game too man he's been fighting for a long time dude he has been fighting for a long time man and uh he's good he's obviously you know a beast still i don't know he's uh, it's gonna take him a while to recover but you know he tra- i believe he trains with like adesanya and guys like that too so like he's not training with scrubs you know yeah, you know, those those New Zealand guys, man, they got a good camp over there. Yeah, so I mean that was an upsetting loss, but it you know, and then what we got to go into made up for it. I mean, I think everybody but a select few was riding the Robert Whitaker train, even myself. I I've always liked Robert Whitaker. I've never thought I never disliked him at all. I always thought he was a hell of a fighter, a hell of a dude, and I wanted to see him win. Based on what we've seen in Duplessis in the past. It was almost like you almost had to pick Robert Whitaker. He was like a minus 300 favorite. But then slowly as fight time started to come along, it just my gut started turning. Something told me like something was going to happen, dude. Same, man. That was, uh, I, I love Whitaker, dude. He's a cool dude in general, man. Just everything he does in the interviews, he, he's a likable dude. You know, all those guys from Australia, that fighter over there, dude, they're fucking awesome. But I had this slick feeling, dude. And... Duplessis is strong. I'll tell you what, it wasn't that slick. My feeling yeah. was not that slick. I didn't expect something like that to happen. I thought maybe like an edged out, you know, decision, just a, a brawl. I did not expect Duplessis to look like that, though. Dude, let's dissect it, man. First round. I mean, you're seeing an even exchange. Yeah. With Whitaker. Whitaker looked good, but something was off, dude. You could tell. Something was off. I don't know. He was scared, timid, broke, or something like that. Something was fucking off, dude. I'm sitting there like, all right, 
It's not supposed to be going down like this no. at all. And he, then he see Duplessis started edging him, started getting him, started like even when if he was should be losing the exchange, he wasn't. He was stronger, dude. This guy, I think Duplessis is a lot stronger than people think. Man. I think why. he's a lot better than people think. Not even stronger. I think he's really a lot better than people put him out to be. And I think the only reason we haven't seen him perform that well is because his cardio was obviously defected because he had that issue with his nose where he couldn't breathe and things like that. So he was getting gassed out towards the later rounds of some of his fights. And I think we saw that, but then he gets that surgery and fixes him. And this man comes out looking like a fucking superhero. Dude, he looks good. He <laughs> looks, looks like he looks like the South African Superman. The question is, can he beat Izzy? Um, so in a, in a game like that, when, you know, he somewhat outstruck Whitaker, right? That's what he did, right? Yep, 74, you know? 74 to 32. Actually, I mean, that's what the whole fight was, right? Can, do you think he can outstrike Izzy? Fuck no. From a distance, no. Up close, maybe. Do I want him to? Yeah, dude. Oh, I, I want not. him to, too. After no. Izzy's bullshit, I, I wasn't a big fan of that, man. Like, that, for one, you were drunk. I get it. You want to build hype around a fight and things like that. But, like, come on, man. Get in there and start acting like a fool. Especially the shit he was saying. Like, you sounded dumb, bro. Dude, he's too where were his friends? His friends should have said, bro, fuck it, don't do this. Don't do this. You sounded cringe as fuck. Nobody, Green. nobody wants to listen to that shit, dude. Duplessis had the coldest line ever. Dog. When he was I'm like, gonna... you say you from Africa, but you are no brother of mine. I was like, oh. damn. All right, so I'm going to ask you, are you a Duplessis fan? I am now. Hell yeah, I am. After that, I definitely am. Because I like Robert Whitaker and he edged him out real well, man. Like that knock, like the TKO, the, the finish was great. I definitely have a lot more respect for Duplessis now. Like at first I thought he was a little corny, you know? I was like, it was this guy. But now, nah, yeah. Earned my respect you, for sure. You broke him, man. He you did. I, and uh, I like his style of striking, dude. And that that stand over ground and pound, bro, he just sat there and just that shit that that started the night for me right so do you, the i mean obviously i know he's moved into the number one contender spot but do you think he's going to be ready though i think they're trying to get izzy has to be the next fight because all the other champions have fights i'm pretty sure i mean dude it it, it is the next fight i'm telling you that that fight's gonna happen and it's gonna I'm be stoked. a great media show i'm stoked um if if he's able to keep the distance close it could be good but izzy you know, Izzy's got some insane, insane striking, dude. Let's be real. Well, Izzy, Izzy's been a champ, and he's the champ for a reason. I mean, if he can take punches from Alex Pieta, then I mean, Duplessis Duplessis should be – can't. there's yeah. no way Duplessis can punch as harder than, than Pieta does. I'm just going to say that out. All right, there's no way. No, man. No, and so, kicks either. Strikes better. Nothing like that. that no. Is the thing. That's he's going to win. He's not going to do it unless he – um. Yeah has some good coaching that comes in there which they do so yeah no for sure i mean shout out to him dude that was one of my favorite fights of the night just to see that win from him uh the next fight may have been fight of the night in my opinion this was a scrap that was fight of the night pantoya moreno what a brawl um i hate it for brandon moreno but i picked pantoya yeah he was my pick of the night um my underdog yeah i picked him he was my underdog pick of the night so i i chose him i got a little bit of shit for it uh but i've seen him fight man i've seen him he's beat brandon moreno before we've seen what happens when someone's beat you before and he just looked like and to be honest i don't know if i like his fighting style very much man all right to be honest i do like it do you okay so it sort of reminds me. He's very really, weird, dude. Really faint jabbing, and so he reminds me of Drunken Fist Rock Lee. Okay, fair enough. I, I can see that. <laughs> he's sitting there. He goes. He I can stumbles. see that. He's he so goes, weird with it, he dude. Stumbles. He stumbles like this. He stumbles, stumbles, stumbles. I was like, bro, this is fucking. Nobody fights like this. He's almost playing possum with you, and he looks like he's doing, but he's like, Put it down. and then the dude can get a takedown on you. At any, at any moment, dude. And he made a light work of Brandon Moreno with them takedowns. And that's ultimately what won him the fight was that the is, takedowns. Man. 
the uh, the stand the, the exchange. I mean, they were both were doing pretty good. I mean, yeah. he, he fucking dominated the first round. I, I think, dude. Oh yeah. I, I mean, I I personally think he won four to one, four rounds to yeah. one. Yeah. Okay. I agree. Uh, I, I I can see that for sure. That's what I my thought of it was uh was four to one. I know some people could have said three two, but I thought four to one. He looked super good, dude. He has his number all day, man. And um, now it just goes. It could be like. You look at this division, man, and you look who's who look who's left in it. And I know we talked about this earlier. It's like, who's next? Is it gonna be another fucking trilogy? Well, this would be their fourth fight. Yeah. With this in the in this division. Well, I, mean, I think I think the next fight for Pantoya is gonna be Brandon Ravel. Um, okay. so we'll we'll get the number one contender or the number two guy versus Pantoya for the belt. I don't think that Ravel can beat him. Personally, no. I think Pintoya gets the win again. It was very sad at the end, man. Did you hear what he kind of said in his like post fight speech? No, what do you what do you like say? talking about like his dad and shit like that? Like that shit kind of hit home. It was very it was very uh very emotional speech by him. So if you haven't seen it, watch it. Uh but he was basically like saying, like, Are you proud of me now, Dad? Like I just want you to be proud of me. Are you proud of me now? Like, I guess growing up, he did like his father was a shithead, like a shithole, and he like, and he didn't have a fuck. He didn't grow up with no father type shit. And now that he's like finally did it, it and he called out his dad like in a serious emotional way. So yeah, kind of hit home. And I was like, I was like, damn man. And imagine a guy like that who they said what three fights ago or something like that he was driving Uber. Really. Yeah, like he was driving Uber until he got his first fifty thousand dollar bonus. He was driving Uber. Jeez, man, and he's he's like he's no slouch either, man. That's insane. Like he's he's been fighting for a while, dude. I mean, yeah. his his jujitsu is unreal, man. Like that's who I was talking about with the arm triangles earlier. Like that dude, that dude can catch anybody. Moreno had some good defense. There were yeah. times where he was, he was switching control completely. Like, yeah, it was good, dude. Moreno is no joke, dude. I I do like Moreno a lot, dude, and um. He's a dog. Like, Moreno's a dog, but at the end of the day, he got outdogged. He did get outdogged. I don't know what's going to happen in that division. Moreno's going to – if Mor- the, the, the thing is, though, is they're too small to go up. Yeah. So it's like they're stuck there. They're stuck in that flyweight division. So it's going to – as long as those guys are that small, they're going to stay there, and they're going to keep fighting each other over and over and over again until we get other little guys, small guys, who are going to come in there and make some noise. Um, and there's not very many of those. No, you you know you thought it would be like you know Car France, but he got robbed. Car so, France, then you got Makayev, Ankh, or what's yeah. his name, Muhammad Makayev, or whatever. Yeah, there's like there's some guys that are like you know top top fifteen, like under under like pretty like you know pretty high in the top fifteen. That that yeah. have really good records, but like in the middle of that, there's guys who are just I'm not calling them scrubs, but they're like fourteen and eight. Yeah, exactly. You know, like, they're not champs. No. So it's gonna stay around that Ravel, Pantoya, Moreno, Kaikar, Frank, like that whole. Uh, and, and there's another guy too. I'm trying to think of his name. I can't remember who it is. Figueroa. Well, Figueroa moved up. I know, but I mean, what, what if, what if he can get Pantoja's number? <laughs> I don't know. I think he has before. I think they have fought. Yeah, I think so too. And he's the only yes. one to beat him. I think. Yeah. Um, three, three way oh, uh, Albazi, Amir uh, Albazi. He's another one. 17 and oh, one like just him. just he just edged out kai car france um I think he's rub. that's really it man like yeah I, like i don't i don't really know what could be next but who knows i thought that was fight of the night much deserved win by pantoya hell of a pick by me because again thank you for winning me some money baby appreciate you hey, uh and now. then and then but as we all know there's levels to this shit baby pound for pound number one Volkanovski gets the dub against Yaya Rodriguez dude there's true he is truly I I think he solidified himself in the potentially top five of all time I dude he's getting there man and if he keeps on doing what he's doing he will be for sure he's definitely the best pound for pound that's solidified Daniel Cormier even said it. everyone was saying it yeah. everyone believed it he is and that guy dude Rodriguez is a scary fucking striker oh he's he's insane 
He is. I love the way he strikes, dude. I love the way he's able to hook his heels. Hook his heels, yeah. He'll hook and shit. And he can change direction and mid strikes go down like this. It's yep. the, the way he hooks his heels are insane. And he, you know, Volk even says like, "You were one of the. You might be the this. You know, the scariest fighter I've gone against. You know, weapon wise. You know, like." And that's saying something after, you know, going up against a guy like Max Holloway for multiple times in a row with the striking skills like he has. And dude, yeah, Rodriguez fucking had better strike than him. And I mean, Max Holloway got outstruck by Volk. Yeah. And you got, yeah, Rodriguez, you know, Volk didn't really, you know, he played with the hands, but, you know, he kind of like, you see Loke, sh- you see Volk shoot, shoot for takedowns and stuff like that. It's like, I'm not playing around. I'm not testing. Too you. smart, dude. That is why, and when people kept saying, like, no, Yair's going to beat him, I said, dude, Volk is in the lab right now, dude. He is way too smart. He know, He's watching tape on everything this guy's going to do to him. And everything this guy thinks he's going to do to him, Volk is going to have a counter to what he's going to do. Volk knew exactly, like, this guy is yeah. a dangerous striker. And he's like, and, I mean, the height, the reach, everything. <laughs> he's not looking good for him in that. And, dog, uh, Volk's just an animal. He's, yeah. He's a... The hammer, and uh, he'll. I love, dude. I huge Volk fan. If he, if he, if he does this two more times, maybe one more time, I could say top five of all time, man. But then, then again, you know, you got you got guys that we were even in this division in the past who've done this, you know, like Mighty Mouse and stuff like that. Yeah, but here's the thing. All right, so Mighty Mouse. flyweight, flyweight, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. the reason why I say Volkanovski. Sh- is a is potential top five. Look at all the odds he's gone against, bro. He was a like a four and a, four inch height difference against Yair. We're talking five six versus five eleven. He's been doing that shit his whole career, basically. He's always been the little guy, and yet he has always dominated the, the guys bigger than him. To me, that's much more respectful than a guy who's bigger than the rest of them and then dominating the division. Volk has always been the guy smaller than everybody else. And he's always had to figure out a way to win. That's why he's so fucking smart. He's a machine dude. And I don't want to step off this fight, but one thought I did have earlier, it was regarding mighty mouse. <laughs> Do you think that he, he could still be a contender right now in the, the UFC? Oh, hundred percent. He'd be a champion. You think he could take Pantoja? Yeah, absolutely. You think he could? Yeah, hell, hell yeah, dude. He's fucking dominating in one FC. Make it fucking happen. They're not going to do that, dude. The UFC realized they made a mistake, and they're not going to look stupid enough to bring him back. Make Mighty Mouse, well, Mighty Mouse is retired, so he's he's not he's not fighting anymore. I don't think he's fighting anymore. But you know, he won. Yeah, he just he just ended up he just won the one FC belt again. He defended yeah. his title again, and then he I think he. Pretty sure he'd retired after that fight. I could be wrong though, but like, oh no, yeah, he would be the, he would be the champion in the UFC right now, hundred percent. It's just that good, he, and he's another guy that's like Volk. Like those guys who are just so intelligent, like their fight IQ is just so high. It's hard to beat those guys because they're gonna always know what you're gonna do. They're gonna always be able to counter what you're gonna do. Like it's very hard to beat a guy with a high fight IQ. Yeah, and so I mean, Volk is just a beast and everything i i don't i don't there's nothing that that man can't do and give the man his flowers fucking now 26 and 2 bro 20, so who, who are his losses at again it must be like so early, early 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 on in his career yeah i mean yeah definitely islam's fuckhead well ass. islam was one and yeah. Corey nelson and afc so he's undefeated in the UFC outside of Islam, which he stepped up for. So fuck that. Don't count. You can't count that. Got that bullshit. And I don't think he lost that. I don't think he lost it either. So technically, he should be undefeated if you really want to get technical. I think that, but look at his run, though. You got one, two, three, four, five, six title defense wins. Legendary, man. I say we watch that fight live on YouTube for the fans real quick and just watch us talk about it. That would be sick. Uh, I can try. I don't mind doing that. Uh, let's see. Well, no, we'll, we'll do that on uh Sunday. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll go back and watch that fight and, and do that on Sunday. And then we'll talk, uh, if we can get, get you in here, we'll go live, live. We won't record or anything. We'll just do a live stream. I'm down with that. Okay. Yeah. Cause it's going to be hard to do it right now. I don't want anything to fuck up. 
if i no, if no. i try to switch it up but i'm down to watch the fight and talk and pinpoint and talk about some of the the shit i would love to start doing that we maybe we could do that pick one fight a week on a sunday and go high depth into the high depth into the fights talk about it and then and do that oh i'm 100 percent down with that yeah, that's a sick idea right. so but yes bulk go easily number one pound for pound i love john jones but really there's brother. no way that you can uh you can take that away from volk after what he just did speaking of john jones man speaking of my friend now that we're done with this we can start talking about whatever the hell we want bro john jones stipe finally announced it's coming at the garden dude i and i uh i, I just wish it was you know, I, I, first off, I love that it's happening. But, um, you know, Steve Bay hasn't fought so long, dude. John Jones is going to work him really quickly. He's going to break him quick. Is I get, I'm calling first round. I think so, too. I think he gets and the we, job done really quickly. And it's going to be, I mean, I'm glad it's happening. So the debate it can be done. Hey, I'm going to fucking be king in both divisions. I'm going to take down the king of the heavyweight division. I think it's the double, I think it's a double retirement fight, too, if I'm not mistaken. Don't say that. Yeah, it has to be because I like a lot of people have pointed it out too. They're fighting in Madison Square Garden, hometown of John Jones. Stipe's gonna come in. If Stipe loses, he's more than likely gonna retire. So it would only make sense for John and Stipe to both retire on like John retires in his hometown, Stipe retires after a loss. This makes too much sense. God, I mean, I hope not. I hope not, but I mean, if it happens, it happens hell of a career for both of those guys the only thing i would say is this if if he does that it's going to be kind of like a khabib effect it's like you you retired without truly like losing like dethroned bro get dethroned don't be so cool let somebody dethrone you i like the fact of someone coming in and dethroning somebody because it just makes for a better story later on you know what i'm saying it does, man. You know, Izzy was the guy that kind of, you know, a lot of people started fucking up Anderson Silva, but, you know, that whole entire passing the torch. Pass the torch, man. And I think he passed the torch on to Tom Aspinall. But nobody's going to agree with me right now because Tom has a false sense of leg injury, but Sergey Spivak, up. it is coming up. But Sergey Spivak is going to definitely, I think, be the champ. And then he's going to get dethroned by Tom Aspinall. All on that right now. All right, bro, call that. Call Remember, it. Episode 26, motherfuckers. You know it. I'm calling it. Um, but, you know, John, shout out to you, baby. You know you're the goat in my eyes, my friend. But Absolutely. fight night next week. God, it's so bad. I want to say that there's like literally, well, I take that back now because JDM's on the card. JDM, because it wasn't JDM's. Well, I thought he was. He was on 290, to- but his fighter, remember, um, I don't know if you saw, cause I know you're in Greece. So a lot of this might be new to you, but the guy he was fighting got it going into the fight. They did a, a brain scan on him and real and found out that he had some sort of like some sort of brain issue that they said that like, if he was to continue fighting, it could potentially kill him. So they had to like remove him from the fight card until they figured out what was wrong with him. So it was like almost the UFC could have saved this man's life. Jeez, dude. Okay. Well, that's, Shout out to the doctors then on that. That's fucking yeah, insane. But JDM stuck around and and was like, just give me whatever. I'm still here. Sh- fucking tank, right? Sticks around. Yeah. Give me a fight. I know you got another card coming up next week. Let's go. So he got one against a guy making his debut. Should make light work of it. But outside, I don't even want to talk about it because it's like, I-, I would assume JDM makes pretty easy work of that. But uh, there's there's yeah. like eight or nine fights, or actually there's like ten fights before we get into a fight where someone has recently won their last fight. Yeah, dude. Um, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll, <laughs> How we'll, bad is that? We're definitely gonna cover it for you guys, but I mean, shit. Everyone should know that it should be Jack. Ever, I'm here to watch JDM. That's about it. Like Holly Holmes. And thank God JDM's fighting in the prelims. Yeah, which is ridiculous, but I mean, I get it. It's the person he's fighting, but yeah, but whatever. We're we're all here for JDM. They should just call this fight night, JDM versus the world. It should be, man. And you got you, know, <laughs> you got Holly Holmes over here, like gonna gonna do her. <laughs> now, don't get me shit. wrong. I think Buena Silva and Holly Holmes could be a decent fight. It's gonna be a good fight. I think it could be okay fight. Um, speaking of Holly Holmes, uh, I saw today that it's 
there's been rumors that uh, Ronda Rousey is re- going to make her return to the Bantamweight division. No way. I saw that today. There's been rumors that she's making her return to the UFC. How old is she? 36, 35, 36. Isn't she doing really good in the WWE right now? Or doing, doing? I don't know. I don't really watch WWE, so I really don't know. Dude, what? She is 30. She was born in 87. So, yeah, she's probably about 35, 36. But she says Damn. she's going to make her return from what I'm seeing. In, in what division? The Bantamweight division. Who, 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 who we got over there right now? Well, that I, know what, what... I believe that would be. I mean, it was nobody. Amanda, it was Amanda Nunes, right? Yeah, so she's been ducking Amanda Nunes so much. <laughs> Imagine she comes back. She, dude, if she came back, she's gonna get the, she's gonna get special treatment, dude. You know it. Of course, they're of gonna course, yeah. they're gonna push her right into a top five fight immediately. Well deserved. I mean, she's a pioneer, and you know. She's the Gracie for women's thing. She started this shit. She's a shamrock. I mean, she's one of the, she was the greatest judo wrestler or women's wrestler in history. You judo you could, grappler. You, Hell yeah. You think you take her? Yeah, bro. She would try to come and do a hip toss on me. I'd knee her right in the cooter. <laughs> Fucking bam. <laughs> <laughs> nice, dude. Yeah, I, I, I think she could whip my ass. She, she is not picking up my big ass and hip tossing me, bro. Not happening. She's gonna leg sweep you so hard. She bro. could probably, she would probably leg sweep me faster than nah. she would hip toss me, though. But she was yeah, known for doing hip tosses and inside leg trips. And you're pretty good at defending those. So. I know how to defend them really well because I've had a lot of them thrown at me. What? And practice makes perfect, but no, nah, she ain't beat me, dog. Nah. <laughs> oh, bro. Now, but, Amanda um, Nunes, on the other hand, she probably pieced me up like a chicken salad, bro. Yeah, man. Well, if she if she, if she, if she, if she comes back to the Bantam weight division, dude, I definitely. I mean, you know, you got Holly Holmes at number three over there, you dude. Know, Holly like, Holmes is oh. is born in 1981, bro. She's 41. This better be her last fight. You better come out with a cooking book soon, dude. Yeah, she's about to be on damn Food Network, UFC so, cooking. Women's division, the new women's division, the cooking division. Right. <laughs> As Sean Strickland would say, put the women back in the kitchen. Dude, I, yeah, I've seen that, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Imagine that. Imagine he made that comment, and then, like, you start seeing the retired women UFC fighters start joining Food Network and cooking. Oh, my God. <laughs> that would be hilarious, bro. That'd be great. <laughs> uh, let me see what what other news do we got going on right now. I'm trying to think of of anything else that might have happened. Uh, there hasn't been much announced, you know. I mean, of course we have. A couple oh, of- um, Tyson Fury, Francis Ngannou finally got announced. So it looks like we finally got a fight for that. Uh, October 28th, which I will be off. So yeah, buddy, and I'm hoping that that's the same Saturday as John Jones Stipe. I'm hoping so. I'm hoping that Dana White gets that petty and goes, John Jones, Stipe, Conor McGregor, Michael Chandler, same night, Madison Square Garden, October 28th, and just says, F you, Francis Ngannou. We're going to do this pay-per-view right. He'd, he'd be goaded for life if he did that. He'd I could see him doing it. I could see him getting real petty with it. Good, man. And the thing is, it's a, st- it's a stupid fight for Tyson Fury. Stupid fight for Tyson Fury? Oh yeah, because he's putting his record on the line for it. He's he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna dominate Francis Ngannou. He's going to fucking destroy him because there's this there's this guy that Tyson Fury is supposed to be fighting soon, man. It's like this big Russian guy with a ponytail. He's bald mm-hmm. with a ponytail, and everybody wants to see that fight. And the fact they're doing this stupid shit for a cash bag is just um stupid. Like Francis, you just got signed to the PFL, right? Yeah, but he had a clause in there that said he could do boxing for a year or two. He wanted to get a boxing fight first before he did the PFL. But now they're doing Francis Ngannou, Tyson Fury. Like, I'm not even that interested in it, to be honest. Like, I'm no. far more interested in in, in this uh, John Jones-Stipe fight. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. I mean, and, 
And you know Dana White's going to make this card absolutely insane. If, if he's that oh, petty. 100%. He's going to make it just like our past one at 290. If, if he does that, dude, I'm talking the, the, the early prelim could shake. Yeah, no, you're right. I agree. So that was really it on that. Um, obviously, Conor McGregor is now, you know, still getting swept in the Ultimate Fighter. I don't really know what else kind of, what other news kind of came out. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. I didn't really capture any news, to be honest. I just really wanted to highlight 290. Yeah, man, there's not much else to happen. You know, they got the whole entire Zuckerberg Musk thing that I do want to fucking talk about. Yeah, you know I mean, you, but to be you know, honest, that could be, that's more interesting to me than Elon, or than Francis Ngannou versus damn Tyson Fury. Same, dude. And, and the thing is, you know, uh, I saw Zuckerberg in the gym with Volk. Man looks cut, too, man. Boy, that dude has some abs on him. Yeah, bro. Uh, you know, let's see. Like, could you think think about this? Like, that's like the all-time ending. That's like how shit should be going on. Like, the two richest men in the world. Like, or some of the richest men in the world in a cage fight. Could you imagine that? What if we started putting the richest people in the world in the cages to determine and, and whoever loses, loses their wealth and it gets spread across the world or sounds the like United that. States. It was like the hunger game. Yeah, bro. <laughs> but it wouldn't affect us because I'm broke as fuck. So I would never get yeah. in there. Yeah, but you know, put, you know. put, put old Donald Trump in there with Joe Biden. Let's see who can make it out alive. Trump would eat that man. <laughs> Talk about it'd be like me versus Ronda Rousey in there. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh nasty man! It's good to have you back, dude. I'm glad you're back. I'm glad we have no technical difficulties or no issues. It feels good. That means the podcasts are going to be going cleaner and smoother. I, I really can't uh, really can't tell you how happy I am now that, that we can start streaming again. So if you're new to the podcast or new to listening to us, uh, we've been doing YouTube videos now for the last few weeks. We're always on Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple Music, all of the podcast streaming platforms. But I think we're going to take it up a notch and start doing some live streams uh, and kind of show ourselves highlighting fights, live fights, not watching them, but, you know, come in there, chat with us while we talk about what's going on, kind of hang out with us and vibe on some of these fight nights and stuff like that. So I think that'd be really fun to do. I agree, man. It's going to be awesome. So we're we're going to do a highlight fighters as well. So we got some good stuff coming, especially for these next dull weeks coming up. We're going to do something good for y'all. No. Yep. I am super excited about that. Again, Overs Club Discord was popping on Saturday night. So if you want to come watch fights and have a good ass time, that's the place to be. So what were you saying? OV, baby. OV. Overs Club. Oh, Overs Club. <laughs> I'm like, OC. You said OV. Oh shit, OBC. OBC, yeah, Overs Club, whatever, little abbreviation. But yeah, if you want to come hang out and vibe with us, man, we had a good ass time the other night. Lots of beers were flying around, lots of bets were frying around, lots of shit talk was going on. It was a good ass time. I took my shirt off, flexed for the camera for about an hour. Uh, so yeah, man, come on in, hang out. Uh, but yeah, Nasty, I'm really looking forward to that, man. I appreciate you taking some time. I know you just got back from Greece, so not, I know you were on some crunch time, jet lag and shit like that. So glad to have you back, brother. We'll uh we'll talk about this Sunday thing, man. We might get a quick quick uh thirty minute stream in and watch that Volt fight live and just kind of talk about it a little bit more and and maybe we'll watch that and the Pantoya fight and make it like a little you know thirty forty five minute stream. Sounds great. All right, man. Well, I ain't got much left, brother. That's it for me. Appreciate everybody uh, listening. We'll uh, see y'all next week. Peace, bro.